Hi guys, it's Jill, and welcome back to the Jet Rail Podcast. This week's episode uh, is going to be centered around ponies, and uh, my views on things, and how it's shifted. So, um, if you're not an avid pony listener, this ain't the podcast for you, but if you're interested in horses and, um, you know, training and whatnot, then keep on listening. Alrighty, friends and family, um, if you saw yesterday's YouTube video, then you are probably expecting a podcast about using horses, um, as your means to make money, and, um, I do want to talk about that, but, um, I just got done having a really long conversation, um, over text, I wrote the longest message I think I've ever written in my life about where I'm at with positive reinforcement and that just felt more right to talk about and I feel very torn right now because I'm like really (laughs) invested in both topics and honestly I might sit here and go ahead and record um that one also for next week if you're listening to this for next week Uh, we'll see anyway um so this topic um I have to be careful because I want to do it justice and I really want to convey what I mean, and I don't want anything to be taken out of context or um, uh, construed in any way. Um, So if I get a little repetitive, it is for the sake of trying to fully cover all my bases so that you guys really understand what I'm talking about. Um, I think it's hilarious that I think that people care that much, but I hope that there are at least three of you that are like, okay, yeah, I want to know. So... We are going to start from the top, and I'm going to work my way in there, I'm sure. Um, The rabbit hole brain will take hold, and we'll get somewhere. Um, So, as you guys know, or uh, if you don't know, um, I used to be an eventer. I started my horse career at eight, and I started eventing. Um, And, well, I started riding at like seven, and then I got my first horse at eight. And I started eventing at probably like ten, I think. And then, um, I made my way through a few ponies, uh, attempting to level up, only got through training, and then I started with Zoe, who is my current mare. Oh, good burp. And, um, she, I went through training with her as well, and, um, uh, towards the end of our run there, she was just absolutely asinine to ride, like, it was awful, I hated it. (laughs) Um, it just, like... She was tight, and her tail was like a propeller at all times, and everybody loved to say, oh, she's so sassy, or vets and farriers were like, she has ovarian cysts, or her back shoes need to be fixed, that's why it's happening. We did everything, we ran every test, we had them all look, nothing, uh, nothing fixed it, and, um... If you asked me what I think the problem was, I think that she was pissed. <laughs> like, because when I, I've watched videos, like, hours of footage of us, and um, it's when I put my leg on that she flips her tail like that, because um, for one reason or another, it either hurt, or it pissed her off, or she had a bad association with it. Uh, maybe it hurt at one point, and it doesn't anymore, but she doesn't like it. Um, and... So, yeah, uh, horse that you can't put your leg on is not great, but it took me a while to realize that, and it's not consistent. Um, you know, sometimes it's a little bit of pressure, and sometimes it's a lot of pressure, and, um, like, it just, it varies, and it's real. so it was really hard to, like, pin down what exactly was irritating her, and I guess it's just, like, you know, our bodies feel different every day, and so, you know, we had good days and bad days, but she just felt like riding a bottle rocket, like she was ready to explode, especially at horse shows. Oh my God, it was so awful. Um, and so, 
you know, there's all of that. And I was just like, I was about ready to throw my hands up in the air and just say, I'm screw it. I'm done with it. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. This is like, the horse is not happy. I'm not happy. Neither of us are having a good time. The only time we enjoy each other is when we're galloping on cross country, flying at fences, you know, that was the only time that she was ever good. And you know why? Because my leg wasn't on. Well, I wasn't like asking anything of her. I mean, like, I, obviously it was like steady on to fences, but that's about it. I didn't have to bully her on cross country, anything like that. In stadium, like tight turns and half halting and all that, got her wound up. Dressage, that is just a monster in and of itself. But, um, you know, which is funny because that's what we did six days a week. Um, and she just, it was just awful for both of us at shows. And, um, so I, I moved up here, um, as you guys know, and before I did that, I actually, the first day I stayed here was because Zoe came home. Um, a lot of you know that she had colic surgery and, um, she, um, she colicked really, really severely and we almost lost her. And, um, but, you know, by the grace of the surgeon, she was saved. And so we brought her back and she was on stall rest for like, I think, was it like, a, I think it was like three months. I can't, I'm terrible with time. No, it, might have, it was a month. I think it was a month that she was on stall rest and she could go limited turnout the next month. I think that's what it was. Anyway, she was on stall rest for a while and I was like, well, I don't want to just like not interact with her at all. So I was like, let me trick train her because I'd done it with Bo, uh, my uh, horse before her, um, when he was off for eight months. <laughs> that was a blast and we got zero things accomplished with trick training because I just was like, yep, I got it <laughs> and did not read any material. Nothing. Just went at it. Very bad. Um, but with Zoe, I was like, I'm going to do it right this time. I'm going to lie. I think I looked under a trick training hashtag or something and, um, stumbled on positive reinforcement and the willing equines work and Adele and, um, I did all of that and just absolutely fell in love with the idea. It fit everything that I'd ever believed in because I don't know. And if you're not in a place where you are able to admit this, or maybe you've never thought it before, but this is where I was for a very long time. And a lot of the things that I did while I was riding like if I would yank on the bit or correct or use a whip or spur, like just those things, every time I did them, I validated them and justified them in my head and was like, this is how horse training is. You have to do it. Otherwise, you know, the horse is going to do X, Y, Z. And if I just correct it, the problem will stop and we can keep doing what we need to do. But every time that happened... I don't know, maybe you can call me a tree hugger or a sissy, <laughs> um, but, like, every time I did that, I, like, felt sick to my stomach. Like, I didn't, there were so many times I just got off and cried because I was so upset with how mean I'd been to my horse, and, um, you know, I just, I don't like that feeling. I don't like feeling like I'm, like, bossing my horse around or being the leader or, like, I'm in charge, head honcho here, um, you know, I don't like being told what to do without any, um, you know, like any say in the matter. Ask my parents. <laughs> that does not work for me. Um, and I think horses deserve the same right. And maybe I'm being, um, I have the word anthropology stuck in my head. That's not the right word. Anthropomorphic. Um, and, but I, I don't know. I just, I feel like they deserve that same right to be able to, um, be like, Hey, that's not working for me. Let's try something else. And, um, they shouldn't have to scream by bucking and rearing and swishing their tail all day long, you know, like, and I'm not talking about like fly swish. I'm talking about like violent ringing of the tail. Um, if you watch some of my older YouTube videos, you'll see it of Zoe. Um, but like, she shouldn't have to yell at me like that. I mean, if she pins her ears or if she um, doesn't respond the first time I ask, if she doesn't understand, <laughs> ask again, ask differently, do something else. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. And that's what riding felt like to me for a really long time. I was like, I know all the basic principles. I was like, every clinic I go to, I know everything that they're telling me to do. Leg on, lengthen your reins, shorten your reins, sit up, s lean forward, you know, like just 
so many different things that I'd heard all my life. I was like, why is this not working? And it's, it's because the same mold doesn't fit every horse, you know? I mean, like, and the, some riders, it's just, it's intuitive and you can't explain it. And, um, you know, like every Boyd Martin clinic or Will Fodry clinic or Karen O'Connor, not Karen O'Connor. <laughs> I don't like Karen O'Connor. Um, but like, you know, at Jim Wofford, like I went to so many incredible, incredible top of the sport riders to, you know, rode under them. And, um, like I just, I went home and I was like, oh yeah, that'll do. I tried it. And then it like 10 minute fix wore off, you know, it like, it only works for so long because it's not addressing the actual issues. And, um, so it's just, it's really frustrating because I, I never understood why, um, half halting worked or inside leg to outside rein worked. Those are just things that I just accepted. I never looked into it and I never understood the training behind it, why the horses, um, gave the way they did and how, um, you know, they were being reinforced. I, I knew nothing of learning theory. And I, I feel like I've been a pretty, you know, successful rider, not as far as like, obviously scoring wise. I mean, I just won for the first time and I've been competing for like 10 years. Um, but I mean, I feel like I've been a fairly good rider. I feel like my equitation is semi-solid now that I say that. <laughs> I'm terrified to get on a horse again because I feel like I haven't ridden in like a month in my, or two, I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a minute. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I feel like I, I had a pretty good handle on like how to ride. I just did not know um, necessarily a lot about training. And, um, you know, when I would ask, it just was explained in really weird ways by like, oh, she's being sassy, correct her, instead of like, she's coming above the bridle, you know, like, it's just, it's just weird stuff that was just vague, um, you know, just bad explanations, and like, why does this work, well, it just does, like, stop asking questions, you know, like, I don't know, and I mean, there will be people out there that will say that's just bad training, but I... <laughs> I've ridden with a lot of different people and, um, you know, it's, they all say the same thing in different ways and sometimes it clicks better. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I, I just, I cannot, I, I, oh God, this is difficult to talk about because I want, I have so many like thoughts in my brain and I want to get them all out, but I'm, I'm only at 12 minutes, so I have time. <laughs> um, but you know, here's the deal. I, I switched to positive reinforcement because I wanted to work with Zoe and I talked to Adele like crazy and was just like, what is this? How do I do this? Tell me what to read, blah, blah, blah. Read books, did all this research, listened to podcasts, like hours on hours on hours of podcasts and watched videos. And, you know, I just, I did everything that I could to really get a handle on the information. And, um, you know, just learn more. That's all I wanted to do so that I could train my horse. Um, the problem in lies that, um, A, obviously I'm a social media person, so I wanted to share all this wonderful knowledge that I'd found. But the issue with that is I was still learning it and it is a little bit difficult to explain everything as you're learning it and why you should use it and how you should use it. And then, you know, the second I start talking about like using positive reinforcement, everything's like, or everyone's like, well, I have this issue and I only know how to correct it with negative reinforcement, positive punishment. What do I do? Help. And I say, I don't know how to do that. Um, and it's just like an influx of, I'm confused. I don't know how to help you. And, um, everyone questioning. And, you know, a lot of the questions were genuine, but some were like, you're an idiot. Hey, <laughs> that's, or this is how it's always been done. How dare you challenge that? And, um, a bigger issue with positive reinforcement is ego. Ego is a huge deal because and I'm not saying that in an arrogant way, like, um, you know, like people that don't use positive reinforcement or egotistical or anything like that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that it's, it's a threat to what you believe. Uh, it's, it's your whole belief system is traditional training. I mean, for most people. And so it, 
if somebody says, hey, what you're doing is potentially unethical, you say, uh, no, I love my horse. I would never do anything unethical to my horse. How dare you accuse me? And then you get defensive and you shut off to it altogether. And, um, that's how I went at it at first. <laughs> that did not go well for me. I got slaughtered online. Um, learned my lesson the hard way. Thanks for all the positive punishment, guys. Really appreciate that. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, and that was something that I confronted too, except I went the route of, okay, good. I felt bad about doing that anyway. And, um, then I went the purest route for a little while because that is, that is my pattern. And I'm finally grown up enough to acknowledge that. Um, and you know, I, I said in a video a while back that, um, I'm just like a trend chaser or something that like every time there's a new trend, I want to try it. And somebody commented and was like, Hey, why are you hating on yourself for that? Like science and stuff, it, it, it develops and it grows and you should, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be open-minded to stuff like that. And try it. If you don't like it, don't use it. Don't do it. But now you know, instead of just being like, no, I'm not trying anything at all. Screw that. No, it's not for me. But like, try it and see if it is so that you know for sure. And um, sometimes if you try it once, uh, you've done it wrong. So that was another thing I did with trick training. I tried it the first time. And if I had said, I'm never doing that ever again, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't know anything about positive reinforcement or anything that I know now because it wasn't the right time. I wasn't, you know, mature or educated or driven enough to sit down and read all of that material and learn it, you know? So I don't know. I think that, um, it's, it's just a big, <laughs> it's a big old, big old issue. Um, and I, I don't think that using negative reinforcement is unethical and I'm getting to that more. Um, but I think that it, it crosses a line much quicker than positive reinforcement does. Um, because like, in my opinion, like arguing that positive reinforcement gets unethical is, um, if you don't train things, um, you know, quickly enough. But I mean, like that's, it's a, that's a reach on a con. Um, like, you know, if there's an emergency and you haven't gotten to trailer loading yet and you're like, well, I can't pull on the horse. It's negative reinforcement, you know? So, but like, that's, that's about it. And I'm allowed to say that because the science shows that positive reinforcement is the, I mean, it's the better way to train. I mean, the, the dog training world is almost exclusively positive reinforcement, except for your TV gurus like Cesar Chavez, who is essentially the Dr. Phil of (laughs) dog training. Like, not really like an actual psychologist. So you get my point. But what I'm saying is that, um, I don't think that negative reinforcement is like this horrible, awful, evil thing. I just think that it, um, it can be a very dangerous thing. You can really, really escalate into positive punishment really easily. And if you guys don't know, know exactly what I'm talking about, um, positive punishment is adding something the animal doesn't like to decrease behavior. Um, so like administering a whip or spanking a child, um, hitting a horse for biting, um, which consequently doesn't really decrease the behavior, um, contrary to a few yeehaws that every time I say that they go, uh, no, I had this one mare and she bit at me and I decked her and, uh, her eyes rolled back into her head and she almost fell over, but she never did it again. And I'm like, well, that sounds like a healthy training mechanism. I'm so happy for you. (laughs) Um, but, uh, I have successfully trained horses not to bite with positive reinforcement, uh, which seems wildly counterintuitive to people who are not familiar with it. Um, but it is possible and positive reinforcement is, um, is a method to increase behavior. So reinforcement increases behavior, punishment decreases behavior. Positive means to add, negative means to subtract. So negative reinforcement means you're removing something the animal doesn't like to increase behavior, where positive reinforcement means adding something that the animal does like to increase behavior. So like giving them a treat for doing something right or um, negative reinforcement would be releasing the rain, you know, to reinforce the self-carriage or whatever. Um, Anyway, uh, so with all that said, um, I'm trying to think if I've covered everything that I wanted to say about it first. 
um, before I get into like where I think I'm going with this. Um, I, I just, I think that, um, it's a very volatile topic because it's, it's a new science in the horse world. It's a new science in general, but, um, it's, I mean, in the sense that it's not been around since (laughs) the horse training began. Um, but it, it definitely is, is a viable method, but I think that it has to be incorporated correctly. I think that it's easy to, um, do wrong. Um, and listen here, I am not trying to tell you guys that you shouldn't use it. I'm saying that, um, it can be difficult to use, but just because something's hard doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You know, I mean, it's, (laughs) like some of the best things in life are more difficult. Um, not everything is easy and sometimes yanking on your horse's face might be easier, but that's not the best answer that you can give. And I think it's, you know, it's often an insult to their intelligence and our intelligence when we just shortcut, um, into doing, you know, stupid caveman stuff on their backs, (laughs) um, for lack of a better explanation. Um, but I think that there is a way to do both well, um, and that's where I'm going with this. So, um, you know, I I really dove head first into positive reinforcement and just did did that only that for a year, and um, you know, I it's, it's so tricky because I have so many thoughts. And if I say them individually, then it sounds like that's just the one reason, but that's not it. Um, so like, let me be honest. Here's the first, one of the first reasons it takes a really long time. It takes a really, really long time to get to where you want to be. You know, I saw people in my comments on yesterday's video, um, that were like, You know, it's not unreasonable that when you get on a horse that um, your rate of reinforcement is really fast. The amount of times you're stopping and giving the horse a treat, you know, um, to reinforce the behavior. And um, that is, oh my God, you can't be on the computer, little cat. You should be in my lap now. Um, That's a lot of time and a lot of effort. And maybe I'm lazy. Maybe I'm selfish. Maybe I'm a bad horse trainer. Or maybe I'm ignoring the science. I don't know. Um... The biggest issue here that I do really want to say is, um, the last thing I want is for people to listen to this and go, oh, she's not doing positive reinforcement anymore. She's going back on her words. She's going back on everything she said. Um, no, that's, um, people are allowed to grow and change and, um, develop their opinions. I feel like I'm a very open-minded person. I'm really interested in learning new things and I, I want to know more about everything. I want to know more about horse training. I want to know more about positive reinforcement. I want to know more about classical riding. I want, I'd like, there's so much I have left to learn. And why in the world at 21 would I be stellar at this? And, you know, maybe at some point in my life I will be, um, you know, more able to offer exclusively positive reinforcement. And, and maybe I won't. Right now, like, at this exact moment in time, February 10th at 11.59 p.m., I am plugging in my laptop. (laughs) Um, Hold. Um, At this exact moment in time, I I think that using some negative reinforcement and balancing it with positive reinforcement is okay. Um, I think that it has to be done well, and um, I think... That the biggest thing that needs to be, um, I'm speaking in passive voice, that's really annoying. Um, <laughs> I think the, the, the biggest issue is paying attention to the horse. Is it making the horse uncomfortable? Is the horse stressed? Is the horse confused? All of those things. That is my priority. Um, for a year, my priority was, is it positive reinforcement or is it negative reinforcement? And anytime I use negative reinforcement, an immense sense of guilt, um, I felt. And a lot of people messaged me that too. And a lot of people said, hey, quit promoting that. My followers are getting upset and they're messaging me saying, should I use positive reinforcement because I feel really guilty that I'm not. And, um, I also got a lot of messages like that that are like, I feel super guilty, but I'm in a lesson program and I can't do anything about it. Or, um, 
you know, my trainer won't let me or blah, 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 blah. So, um, I, I don't think that, um, negative reinforcement is the end of the world. And I think that you can combine well. Um, and I think that combining gets really confusing for the horse, um, because you can poison the cue. Um, so what that means is say you're working at your desk. I'm taking Alexander Curlin's, um, example, but say you're working at your desk at your day job and you're in a cubicle and your boss comes up behind you and says, Hey buddy, see me in my office after work. And you say, okay. And he leaves and you think to yourself, Hmm, am I going to get fired? Am I going to get in trouble? Am I going to get commended? Am I going to get promoted? I don't know. I don't know what to expect. So what do you do? Do you sit at your desk and not care? Mm, not likely. Most of us would sit there and stew in anxiety and be stressed and not know what to expect. Because you don't know whether you're going to get punished or rewarded. Do you see where I'm going with this? So when you combine, if your horse never knows what to expect then you can poison the cue, and um, there's a whole study done on it by Dr. Jesus Rosales Ruiz and Mary Hunter, um, where they did exactly that with a little dog, and the differences were insane. In the circumstance where the dog was using combined training, um, so what they would do is they'd pull on a leash, and if the dog didn't respond to the command immediately, but when the dog came over, he still got a treat. But the dog was a lot less um, inclined to go back over to the spot where he would get cued. Um, when he did come, he wasn't very bright. Uh, he just seemed like dull and, um, you know, like a little bit scared. Um, and he was still getting a treat after. But in the other instance, it was just positive reinforcement and the dog was like super excited and, um, you know, like willing and ready and did everything quite happily and quickly. Um so there's that. Um, so that is something uh, to definitely consider when combining. Um, but I don't think that's a reason to just nix positive reinforcement altogether because you don't want to worry with um, poisoning a cue. Um, but I do think that um, it's something to pay attention to. Um, for me, um, what I am wanting to do is stop saying, um, every freaking word. That's so annoying. Um, <laughs> God, that was candid. I'm really sorry. Mm -mm -mm. I just, I really want to work with my horse again. That's the bottom line. I started feeling like just crazy and all over the place. Oh my God, cat, if you move my freaking thing one more time, stop it. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm really tired of letting my horse waste away in her pasture without me doing anything because I'm so just caught up in this moral dilemma of I don't know how to touch my horse or work with her and I'm very bored of not seeing any progress happen. I don't know how to move on from here. I don't know how to, you know, like do these things in a way that is working. And, you know, it's it could be for lack of trying. It could be for lack of intelligence. It could be for... um La like laziness well, I don't know but um I like I started to say earlier and got distracted um I want to be less concerned with um positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement and what is morally and ethically just and blah 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 to um how does my horse feel and what does she look like how is she reacting um and finding out what we can do you know, what she's okay with, um, because the reality of the situation is, um, I want to ride, I miss riding my horse, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we can do that again in a way that she is comfortable and content with. Um, so, that means that there will be some, uh, negative reinforcement, because, um, while, yes, it is possible to ride totally positive reinforcement Lee, um, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm just not. Um, I want to, um, you know, I don't, 
I, I just, I don't really have enough faith in myself as a trainer to be able to do that. I want so badly to be able to work to bridalist and bitless and, um, all of those wonderful things. But first I have to get back on my horse and help her be okay with my leg again. And, um, I'm not going to be able to be up on her saying left or pointing one direction or the other, holding a target for her nose to follow. Um, sorry about that. Um, like I'm just, I'm not going to be able to do those things. I'm going to steer with reins. I'm going to put my leg on and, um, I would like to get back to some level of dressage. Um, you know, and I want to do it with positive reinforcement. Um, but it's going to have to be both. And I'm just going to have to do some trial and error. And, um, I probably won't be broadcasting it all over the internet because, um, you know, I just, I'm, I'm really tired of just constantly worrying about what everyone is going to think. I can't tell you how many times I have just not worked with Zoe or, um, done something like it just even by myself, you know, like nobody's watching me, but I'm so worried about going against my word or what I've said in the past or what people think of me that I like just, uh, I just act according to that instead of what feels right to me. And, um, you know, it's, it's just getting ridiculous and I'm tired of not working with my horse. Honestly, it's just really exhausting. I just, I just want to work with her and, I'm not going to go out and just, like, go saddle her up and go for yeehaw giddy up ride. Like, I'm not just going to revert back t- and throw out all the knowledge I've gained because it is, it's an incredible wealth of knowledge that I know now, <laughs> and it's fantastic. And, um, I, I just, I really just want to be authentic, and that is really hard to do when I'm setting hard and fast rules that I'm not even really sure if I believe in. Um, and that's so easy for me to do. I do it so much that like I get really excited about learning something or, uh, a thing I know now and I just believe in it with all my heart and just throw out my head. And, um, Alexander Carlin, one of her favorite things to say is, um, you know, don't throw out anything, um, unless you can replace it. So like, don't remove a negative reinforcement cue unless you can replace it with positive reinforcement. And that's what I did. Baby in bathwater. Thrown. Gone. Out. (laughs) So, um, yeah. And I don't totally agree with everything that Curlin does. I don't totally agree with everything a lot of people do. Most of them, in fact. If not all of them. All of the people. Um, (laughs) but, you know, that's, that's the thing about existing. You get to pick. It's up to you. And I forget that a lot. And, um, so my plan is to focus on my horse. How is she feeling? What, what does she think of this? Let's see. Let me try this. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. What about this? Okay. You seem fine. Okay. Okay. This is working. Let's keep this. All right. Now this, and you know, like just trial and error. That's what I'm good at is problem solving instead of just being like, okay, I'm limited to this one box. I don't know how to do it. Um, but I have, I have huge dreams and aspirations for me and Zoe and, um, I have so many things that I want to do with her and I'm not ready to just be stuck walking around in a pasture. And, um, I think that there is so much value in that. I think it is absolutely vital to your relationship with your horse. Um, but, um, at least in my philosophy, it doesn't have to be true in your philosophy. Please don't get offended that I said that. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I just, I, I want to, I want to do, I want to do stuff with my horse. Sue me. Oh my God. (laughs) Like, um, and I, I think it's totally fair to say that. Um, and I think that a lot of people that do do positive reinforcement exclusively or for the most part are pretty much like that. They're just, I'm, I'm going to do as much of this as I can. I'm going to keep learning and doing more, but, um, you know, I'm going to do what feels right by the horse. I think that I am probably going to be a little bit more open-minded to both, but like I said, that doesn't mean I'm just going to go grab her out of the pasture and start riding. Um, I'm going to work up to it. Um, If you guys haven't seen yesterday's video, I uploaded a new video to my YouTube. 
um, of where I was working with Zoe. And what I did was I got her out of her pasture because her and her mother, not mom, are a little bit, um, a little bit separation anxiety E. Zoe, not so much. Her mother, on the other hand, quite a bit. So, um, what I've been trying to do, if it would ever stop raining here, um, is getting Zoe out every day, taking her to the cross ties, and just grooming her so that her mom doesn't have to freak out for so long. Um, I mean, she has hay and things to snack on and keep her busy, but there's nobody else in the paddock. So, um, she has plenty of horses around her, but she can't nose anybody because they're all either stud colts or stallions. Um, it's interesting layout that we have here. Um, but there are aisles in between. So anyway, she can see other horses. She just can't touch them and nobody's in the paddock. So we take Zoe out or I take her out for a little bit of time just so that Amber can start getting used to Zoe being gone, um, for a little bit. And, um, and then I just brush her and I put her back. And, um, that is more for Amber's sake than Zoe's. Um, cause I think Zoe could handle more, but, um, la, la, la. but Amber, on the other hand, I just, I don't want to push her. I can't, it hurts my heart every time she whinnies and calls for Zoe. Um, so anyway, we're working on that. And, um, then when I do bring her back in, I play with her. Um, last time I put the bareback pad on her and girthed her up, put her bridle on, all that good stuff. And she was an absolute star. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm working my way back. Um, the bareback pad is a precursor to the saddles. I have a brand new jump saddle that is just like screaming at me to be used. I miss it so bad. I want to jump. Oh my God. Um, so I'm just going to try, try getting back to doing those things, you know, well, not back, but like in a new way. Um, you know, I, I know so much about riding and how to be a quiet rider, and I really think that I can apply those principles, um, in combination with positive reinforcement. I really think that we can make it work. Um, I just have to be, hi, <laughs> um, have to be tactful about it and, um, intelligent. So I'm going to try to do all of those things. Um, please do not, listen to this podcast and say, wow, Jill, you are such a fake. You said all of those things about positive reinforcement and you shouldn't use negative reinforcement and how dare you, you liar, filthy liar. Um, yes, you can say all those things. You are entitled to your opinion. However, um, I would like to remind you that your views, um, as a five-year-old are likely not the same as your views as a 15 and or 20 year old. Um, people grow up, people change People stop believing in Santa Claus and, um, you know, the tooth fairy, and they can stop believing in negative reinforcement or positive reinforcement, or they can choose to believe in both, and they can see the value in both of them and try to incorporate them in a way that works for them and their horse. I would like to tailor my program with Zoe to something that allows us to do what I hope we can. And, like, listen, if if she just shuts down and everything that I try just sends her into full-blown panic, then I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board. And if nothing I can do works, I'll give up. Like, and if jumping is just not her thing, then we won't do it. But um, I have a sneaking suspicion that that is not the case. Um, so, yeah, um, that is that. Is that. Um, whoa, hi, Rocco. What's up, little dude? You want to say hi? That was me, by the way. I'm really, like, good at cat meowing. Can you move forward, please? Out of the way. Go away. Get. I'm filming. Um, anyway. So, stop licking me. Ugh. 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 I'm flirting with a cat. <laughs> stop. Stop touching me. Um, okay. Sorry. Focusing. So, I think that that is my piece. I, I think I've explained what everything is for those who may not know. Um, I've explained the backstory. I've explained what I used to believe and where I am now. I just think that I, I get really caught up in big ideas all at once and sometimes lack the ability to apply <laughs> um, or see them through all the way. Because, um, like, some people with positive reinforcement, they can go pure. 
they can do it. They have the facilities for it or they have the education for it, you know, and it just, it just works. And, um, or they have the patience and the drive. And, um, right now I just, I really don't feel like I do. And, um, and I'm not doing it for the sake that I can just like, you know, start jumping and going back to eventing again. Eventing isn't even like in my peripheral anymore. Um, but as far as like just being able to sit on my horse and like walk around for a little bit, like, mm, yep, yep. I want to do that. <laughs> that is the goal for like the next couple of months. That's what I want to be able to do. And I think what I'm probably going to do with Zoe, the next steps after what I'm doing now is, you know, working up to a saddle, working with her in her paddock with the saddle on, working her somewhere else with the saddle on, um, maybe doing a little bit of lunging, um, and because she's wonderful at lunging, yes, it was trained through negative reinforcement, but no, I do not have to chase her. No, I do not use a lunge whip. And yes, she does everything off vocal command. And it is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, so yes, all fear-based training and um, definitely use the lunge whip to accomplish that. But she was a very young bean and now does not react negatively when I ask her to move forward. At least in the recent times that I've lunged her. Um, anyway, now that that disclaimer is done. Um, and then after that, I'm probably going to um, start getting on her. And just hacking her around. No trotting, no cantering, nothing in between. She's not gated. <laughs> um, but just walking and just getting really comfortable. Being able to walk around the farm. That is a huge, huge goal. And I don't know if we'll ever be able to do that totally calmly. Um, it might have to just be an everyday thing. Um, but she's just a spicy bean. So we'll see. I mean, I would love to be able to just walk her around the farm um, you know, calmly on a loose rein and trust her like I could some of the four-year-olds that we've had that have just been so freaking chill. Um, but the reality is we have some studs and Zoe gets Britsky and the four-year-old was the gelding, so did not bother him. <laughs> um, but we'll see. I don't know. I want to try lots of different things and I, I just, I want to enjoy my horse. That's the bottom line. I'm not trying to be a professional trainer or rider or anything like that. I'm not trying to push my horse beyond her limits. And I'm not trying to um, just go back and force my will upon her. I just I just want to ride. <laughs> and that's all. And I, I still want to do groundwork with her and play with her. I love that more than anything. But I'm a little burnt out. I want I want to, to spread it out a little bit. Um... But yeah, I think that that about covers everything. I've talked for 40 minutes, so we've hit our mark. Um, I am trying to decide if I want to throw this up on YouTube as well. The only reason I don't want to is because I don't want to bury all of my other videos in it. I just, I don't know. Somebody suggested that I, um, you know, just like upload. Hold on, there's a hair on my screen here. Um... Somebody suggested that I upload the podcast to YouTube and just, like, put a picture there because I really would rather not film when I'm podcasting because then I'm going to feel like I have to edit it and I just, I don't like editing the podcast. It just is. Listen to me burp and cough and pause and hiccup and talk to the cat. Listen to all of it. If you don't like it, well, put me on two times speed or skip forward. Um, but I... Uh, they said just, like, upload the sound with, like, a picture, maybe, um, so that I, um, so that people can use YouTube to listen to the podcast. The only problem with that is, um, I, I don't want to bury all my other videos, but I don't want to make a second channel because then you have to, like, go through the whole, like, creating a W-2, or a, a, I think it's a W-9, I don't know, like, the tax forms and, like, redoing all of that and I just I do not have the mental bandwidth for all of that um so I guess you guys will just have to let me know but I just I don't know I really don't want to bury all my other videos under all the podcasts I mean I might just have to make a new channel I don't know you guys let me know your thoughts I might do a poll on Twitter or Instagram or something but um I think that that's gonna conclude this week's episode um, 
you can find us, uh, Jet Equa Theory on Instagram, Jill.Trees on Instagram, Jet Real Podcast on Instagram to know when these go live. And um, I also have a Twitter. It's currently Jet Equa Theory, but I'm trying to come up with a new username because I'm really sick of Jet Equa Theory um, being the username. I get so bored with my Twitter account. I go back and forth all the time. But um, the username that it would have been, Jill.Trees and or Jill Trees, um, is taken. And Jill underscore trees also taken. Um, so I've got to come up with something clever um, and rename it. But anyway, it's currently Jet Equa Theory. And um, whew, I think that is about it. Um, if you guys would like me to talk about a specific topic or just want to write me a nice letter, um, feel free to email me jetrealpodcast at gmail.com that's j-e-t-r-e-a-l-p-o-d-c-a-s-t at gmail.com and um i'll write you back when i have time i have a lot of emails in my inbox right now that i just have not had the chance to get around to but i promise you i will eventually um but yeah that's where we're at that is all of the things i hope that i didn't offend anybody or disappoint anybody this is just just speaking my truth. I'm just wanting to do the pony things, enjoy my pony, and that's that's the end of that. So, thank you guys so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next Tuesday to the Jut Rail podcast, and I'll see you guys then. Okay, bye!